Making a movie prop knife for Luigi the Claw, William Hovey Smith, 2020. I'm an author, and I've done a number of outdoor books, and also some business titles. Now, including among these is Create Your Own Job Security. And what this book is about is that whilst you are otherwise unemployed, like many millions are at the moment, you look around and you actually start you some businesses. These might be many businesses to make next month's rent, or these might be something long-term to last you the rest of your life. And I'll tell you exactly how to go about this process. My book is Father of the Grooms. And Luigi the Claw uses a very distinctive knife, as shown on the cover here in a wooden model. And now we've really made the one that will be used in the movie. And here is how you go about doing such a thing. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And we are now about to do the third iteration of our knife for our book, Father of the Grooms. Uh, this is the first draft manuscript of the book, and it shows on the cover a rather distinctive knife, which in fact is this model. I have since produced one out of mild steel, and now we're actually going to make the blade out of Damascus steel, and olive wood from Sicily. This blade is to be used by one of my characters, Luigi the Claw, who is an interesting fellow. Uh, he's an enforcer for the Mafia, and he uses this blade which is derived from an ancient Sicilian pattern from 3,000 years ago that was made in bronze. And I'm replicating it in modern steels and of course wood. I went to Sicily and actually looked for one and I never could find it. I looked in several museums and collections but unfortunately Sicily has been raided by 17 different cultures over the millennia and the first thing each of them did was dig up the old tombs. So consequently anything of any value at all including bronze uh, was quickly salvaged and sold and pillaged and whatever. So consequently there are very few of these remain, if any. And I wasn't able to find one. From the descriptions from the Greek, uh, these were used by an ancient culture, the Sicil, and they were described as being flame-shaped in blade. We would consider this the Chris after the knives made in all oh, Indonesia, the Philippines, and so on. But uh, they made a wavy bladed knife too. And so this is my interpretation of what that knife might have looked like. It uses an eye-shaped handle, and the decorative elements were taken from an old tomb. What I'm going to do is make an outline of the grips on this blank, cut it out with the bandsaw, and then we're going to go ahead and finish it. This side that is more nearly smooth, we're going to have facing the steel. I'm going to put this on my belt sander and then try to reduce this down to a more nearly uniform thickness and then put it on a flatbed sander.
Now we're going to take the scales and trim them more nearly uh, to the shape of matching pairs. The knife scales have been temporarily pinned and taped together. And I've used ordinary nails as pins. And these are purposefully smaller in diameter than the brass pins I'll actually use on the finished knife. So we're going to trim those and then reshape the grip uh, so that we get it more nearly uniform before we actually mount it on the metal. Now that we have reshaped our handle and lengthened the shaft here, I've used half of it as a guide to position my holes of the Damascus steel. Uh, these nails are slightly smaller than the pins I'll be installing, but they are sufficient now to hold the work on our backing board so I can do the cutting and grinding on the steel itself. I now have the blade on the backing board and now I'm going to use a small angle grinder and start cutting away the excess materials. You can see the rather large number of jagged cuts I made and the idea is of course to not to cut your trim line here. Now the fact that these a few of these little tabs are not actually removed, uh, resist the idea of taking those off with a, a vice grips or something like that because you don't want to warp the edge of this blade. So we'll grind away these few remaining little tabs and smooth up this whole profile now on the bench grinder. We have the blade rough shaped on this side using the grinder and you can see the contrast between here and here for example. Uh, you wouldn't dare put this directly on your sanding belts because it would literally eat them alive. So you take off the sharp spots here. Now when I do this side, I'm going to cut the wood about here and then remove this nail. That way I'll be able to put it back and with the angle grinder reshape this point. But in the meantime, before I get this side done, I want to leave it mounted firmly on this board so I have full control. You don't want this thing going uh, 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 when you're grinding on it. got a delicate bit of cutting here. What I'm doing is I've got this scissor blade so I have a little space between here. I've already driven out this nail and I want to make a cut through the wood so I remove it without scarring my Damascus blade here. Now I can use both grinders, both the angle grinder and the bench grinder, and profile this point.
As you can see, the blade is now much more smoothly profiled, and we're going to finish it out on the knife making machine, aka belt sander, and uh, then put an edge on it. But we're making good progress. We're starting to establish the edges now and we're to the point that I'm going to actually cut it off the wood so I can work the other sides. We're now at the stage where we're off the belt sander and we're going to be using fine grits like this to work these small areas here that we can't really get to with the sander very well and then progressively work down till we smooth the grips and ultimately wind up with steel wool. So this is sort of the nitpicky area of getting rid of all these little irregularities and any little sharp points that would uh, tend to burn the hand. You can do things with this that you just can't do on the belt sander. We have now completed our wavy bladed daggers for my book, Father of the Grooms. And in this there were three versions. An initial one made out of wood. One we made out of mild steel. And this is the one that will actually be used in the movie which is Damascus steel and olive wood. And so we have ground it, but not heat treated it or put an edge on it. And the reason being that you don't want your actors wounding themselves on set and bleeding all over the place. So consequently, this is purposefully dulled. It's a little sharper than a butter knife, but not terrible much. But this will do. What's next with the book is I've completed the editing of it and we will publish it in a few months. I've also finished the screenplay. And so that is available if you know of any producers who want a good movie. For now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. At some stage, functional versions of this knife may be made. If you're interested, contact me at hoviesmith at bellsouth.net. The next bill is a 1777 Flintlock 69 caliber Dragoon musket. Now, one of my characters actually hunts with this gun and takes a boar in Sicily, and I'm going to hunt with it in the U.S., and there will be videos about that. The screenplay is going to be submitted to film festivals, the book published in soft cover and as an e-book, and perhaps a movie started as early as 2024. If you know of agents or producers who would be potentially interested, uh, by all means, put us in touch. If you would like more information about the project, go to fatherofthegrooms.net. All of my books are available on Amazon.com and worldwide through other e-book and book outlets, including a first draft edition of Father of the Grooms. Now, this has a tremendous number of errors and mistakes in it, so if you're a nitpicky guy and like to find errors, okay, go after it, guy. Have fun. I've corrected those in the subsequent editions. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.